Look at her, she's spitting nerdy. Look at her, she's spitting nerdy. Can't you see she's spitting nerdy? Look at her, she's spitting nerdy. Good morning, everyone. We are just cooking breakfast. Got some eggs going. Cooking them low and slow. That is how you make the best eggs ever. Got some bacon cooking. We also have some amazing bacon that we got from the farmer's market yesterday. From that butcher person that I was talking about before that like has the, the pasture raised, no hormones added, etc. meat. And this bacon has zero nitrates, zero sugars. Apparently it's literally just, was it salt and smoke or pepper and smoke? Salt and smoke. I think it's salt and smoke. Super clean bacon, which is amazing. And this is the final breakfast product. I have two eggs, four pieces of bacon, two tiny pluots that I also got at the farmer's market. This is a very farmer's markety breakfast because these eggs are from the farmer's market. The bacon's from the farmer's market. These are from the farmer's market. But then I also have a kombucha, which is not from the farmer's market, but I got this at Whole Foods yesterday because I love the Better Booch brand and they just came out with their kombucha in cans, which I think is just awesome. I was uh, about to get ready to go for a walk and then I discovered on my desk a few pieces of leftover chocolate. Last night I wanted some chocolate, so I broke off like one square or a tiny chunk of like a bunch of different chocolate bars and I put it in here and somehow I didn't finish it, which is very unlike me because if there's chocolate in front of me, I usually finish it. And now it's in front of me. <laughs> So I'm gonna eat this. I'm about to go on my daily 5,000 step walk, but I thought I'd tell you really quick about how I'm eating today and why I'm eating this way today specifically. If you watched my last one I eat video, you know that I am on a little bit of a cut right now, trying to lose a little bit of the weight that I put on in this last year, having a very sedentary job. And I also talked about how I want to lose this weight slowly and in a controlled way so that I don't chance any rebound and don't end up hurting my body in any way while losing this weight. There's two things I'm doing in order to make sure I do this right. First is being in a relatively small caloric deficit. I've been in about a 100 to 200 very occasionally a 250 caloric deficit every day. It's probably not necessary to be this cautious about it, but like I said in my other video, I have no actual deadline that I want to lose this weight by, and also don't want to feel like I'm starving myself while I do this. I've found so far that I haven't felt deprived at all, I don't feel hungry throughout the day, like I feel like I'm getting enough food, my energy levels are still up, so this feels like a really good rate of weight loss and caloric deficit for me. And the second thing that I'm doing in order to make sure that I don't damage my body or my metabolism while I'm doing this is to add in regular refeed days or higher calorie days. So for the last two weeks, I've been pretty solidly in a deficit, but yesterday I ate around maintenance calories and today I'm aiming to eat around maintenance to maybe like a 100, 150 calorie surplus. And the theory behind why you wanna do this is essentially the same as why you'd want to incorporate a cheat day. When you're eating in a caloric deficit, your metabolism will start to slow down to account for the fewer calories so that you stop losing weight. It's just trying to stop you from burning all of your fat because it thinks that you have a more limited amount of food available and so, you know, if you were to come across a famine like we would have in the ancient days, it wants to make sure that you have enough on your body to continue surviving. So if your metabolism slows down because you like diet like crazy and don't eat a lot, it doesn't mean you broke your metabolism, it doesn't mean your metabolism is malfunctioning or it's doing anything wrong, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. But that really isn't ideal if you're trying to change your body and get healthy. So doing regular refeeds like this does two things. One, it sends a signal to your body that you can get enough calories and that it doesn't need to keep slowing down your metabolism. So it'll keep your metabolism high at where it was before you started your cut. And the other thing is that it resensitizes your body to the deficit. So a good analogy with this is caffeine. If you drink coffee regularly every morning and you start to build up a caffeine tolerance, then the caffeine will start to have less and less of an effect. If you take a week and go off the caffeine, your body re-regulates itself and so now when you have the caffeine again, you'll get a much bigger energy boost than you were when you were having caffeine regularly. So in this case, the deficit is the caffeine. So if you're in a deficit for a while, your body will stop responding to the deficit as well. If you take a break from being in a deficit by eating at maintenance or at surplus, then when you go back to being in a deficit, your body will respond quicker. A typical day in a deficit for me would usually be a really big breakfast to break my fast around noon or one, and then one or two small snacks maybe, or a kombucha in the middle of the day, and then end my day with a really big dinner, and then round it all out with a little bit of dessert, either some dark chocolate or an adaptogenic latte, whenever I need to be able to hit my macros and my calories that I'm trying to hit. And then also usually track and weigh and log everything pretty closely to make sure that I'm not overeating and just eating a lot more than I think I am. But today, since I'm trying to eat a surplus, what I'm doing is eating three like more medium-sized meals. So that breakfast that I had was actually quite a bit smaller than my breakfast have been the last few weeks. It was definitely a little bit more calorically dense than it looked because the farmer's market bacon was really thick. It's like the thickness of like three pieces of bacon. So in about an hour or two, I'm gonna make some lunch and it'll probably be a smoothie because it is hot 
outside and also I really want to show you the smoothie that I have been obsessed with. I've basically been alternating between having like an eggy bacon-y avocado-y breakfast and having this smoothie so I get to show you that today and I'm really excited about it. Then I'm also really excited for dinner because I'm going to my original butcher, the one that's really far away because they're not only a butcher shop but they're also a restaurant and I went there once for breakfast with my mom and it was amazing and I've been dying to go for dinner and I figured what better time than when I'm trying to eat in a slight caloric surplus. I am tracking today just to make sure I don't go too crazy but obviously I won't be able to log the dinner super accurately but I do have full confidence that if I were just to allow myself to eat intuitively that I would have no problem hitting at least maintenance and probably be in a surplus. So I think my goal is going to be to have consumed about 12 to 1300 calories before dinner so that like I can order kind of whatever I want for dinner if it ends up not being big enough then I can have dessert okay I was at like a thousand steps before I started today so now I'm at like 5,000 so I think I can go another thousand more and go home by the way I do get a lot of questions about this watch it is a withings go activity tracker and it basically only tracks steps and sleep and it tells you what time it is I want it for free in an Instagram contest and I honestly would not spend my own money on it like if I lost it I probably would not replace it. I'm not the biggest believer in uh, the fitness trackers of this day and age. This one specifically, my phone can do everything that this one does. Like my phone can track steps as long as I have it on me at all times and who doesn't have their phone on them at all times in this day and age. And my phone can also track sleep. So like, I don't really need a separate device to do this for me. And then with the more advanced fitness trackers that give you your heart rate and your estimated daily calorie burn, those may be a little bit more worth it. But there's so many factors that actually go into how many calories you're actually burning in one day that they aren't like super accurate. So it's kind of debatable how worth it those are. And I totally get it if like they're motivating for you or having the instant feedback is like helpful. But for me personally, like it's just not very useful. It is smoothie time and I am so excited because it is really hot and I'm dying and I just need something nice and cool to cool me down. I'm also getting a wee bit hungry. I would never recommend protein powder to be a staple in anyone's diet or something to be consuming regularly, especially if you can get protein through whole foods like eggs and chicken and lentils and whatever else has protein. But I've legit just actually been so obsessed with the Organifi chocolate protein that I've been having this smoothie like about every other day. And this is not something I recommend doing, but it's really good and yummy and I've been enjoying it. And I won't be able to do this when I start going back to work tomorrow. So this is my final hurrah with my amazing chocolate smoothie. So the base of my smoothies is 99% of the time some sort of plant milk. I currently have the cashew malt. And then of course I have the protein powder. I've been using the Organifi Complete Protein in Chocolate because I am obsessed with chocolate. And then the rest of these ingredients are basically in order to add more chocolate flavor, more fat, or more fun adaptogens. So we'll usually put in a nut butter. Today I'm gonna use the Artisana Raw Cashew Butter. I love this brand of nut butter so much. They're always so good. And the cashew butter legit tastes like heaven. Like there's only cashews in here, but it tastes like there's sugar. It's just amazing. I use just straight up cacao powder to make it more chocolatey. I've got some hemp seeds hidden back here. I'm gonna put in a packet of the Four Sigmatic Rishi Hot Cocoa Mix, as well as some ashwagandha. Today is a 100% a rest day for me. I'm not doing any of my mobility work or any of my trigger sessions because I just, A, I feel like I really need one. Like my body is starting to be a little bit more sore, which is not necessarily a good sign. And it's also been about a week since I've had a day where I just haven't actually pushed my body. So it's time for a rest day. So I'm using Rishi and Ashwagandha because those are both stress reducing adaptogens. And so I like to incorporate those on days when I'm taking it easy, doing a more chill, relaxed day. I'll do that on my days where I do just do mobility and trigger sessions. But if I'm lifting, I'll usually incorporate something like cordyceps or maca, which both increase energy and boost endurance. And then hidden back here, I have my spectrum essentials. It's chia, flaxseed with coconut and cacao. And then I think I'm gonna throw in a little bit of coconut butter just to make it a little bit more creamy. So I'm actually gonna measure everything out on this scale as I make this because my smoothies, like with the number of ingredients that I add and because most of my ingredients are super calorically dense because they're very fatty, my smoothies can range from like 500 to 1,000 calories. I just don't wanna accidentally make this like a 1,200 calorie smoothie and end up in a huge surplus for the day. So as I add ingredients, I'll just be weighing it on my scale. Now it is time for the frozen ingredients. And I used to always put at least half, 
usually a whole frozen banana in all of my smoothies but since I've been cutting and since I have realized that I function a lot better with fewer carbs in my body I've been trying to cut bananas out of my smoothies so I have a super pro tip for all of you people who are trying to keep carbs lower or keep calories lower or just not consume bananas for whatever reason freeze your liquid bases of your smoothies so I used the malk as like the liquid part in my smoothie so that it blends well but I also have it frozen into little ice cubes so I'm gonna put some of these in and then I also have some regular ice cubes and this will help me get the delicious like frosty consistency I don't know about you but when I have smoothies I like them to be like super thick almost to the like almost in and out style smoothies but not quite because those take a lot of effort to drink but I like my smoothies to be super thick and icy so I like to use a lot of different frozen things I also really love to freeze coconut water and put that in if you're making fruit smoothies you can freeze like orange juice or any other fruit juice to use as a base I like to use as little water based ice as possible because it just it waters down the flavor and that's no fun oh and also lately I've been throwing in some frozen spinach this is all I have left of my frozen spinach so I'm just gonna throw all that in or some frozen avocado and that's a great way to increase some healthy fat add in some fiber and also put in frozen things to make it the perfect frozen consistency. Oh my goodness, I almost totally forgot. I also usually add the tiniest, tiniest splash of maple syrup. talk about the difference between refeed days and cheat days and why I technically don't do cheat days. I think cheat days can be a good thing for some people, but I think for a lot of people, especially people who are just starting to get into health and fitness and actually start working on a relationship with food and fitness and health and their own bodies, that cheat days can foster a really negative relationship with food. Making a food okay only for a cheat meal or a cheat day makes food a lot more black and white than it actually is. It makes food either good or bad, which is not at all the reality of food. A lot of people struggle to lose weight because they struggle with portion control or meal frequency or quality of food and having a cheat day or a cheat meal doesn't fix this problem. It just kind of dresses it up as something else that people can pretend is healthy. Learning to be fit in the short term and healthy in the long term is about creating a lifestyle. And if you start off by learning to eat healthy six days out of the week and then one day out of the week just binge and eat a bunch of junk food, that doesn't translate into a healthy lifestyle or a healthy relationship with food. That more closely follows somewhat of a binge purge mentality rather than any sort of healthy mentality. And like I said, some people can do this and be totally fine. And I think people that have been in health and fitness for a while and really already have a strongly established good relationship with food and health and their body etc can apply this much more effectively and without the danger of it potentially becoming a bad habit but what I think overall helps foster a better relationship with food especially as you're starting out and even as you continue on with a healthy lifestyle is kind of the everything in moderation model. so you guys have seen that even when I'm cutting like I have chocolate I have sugar I allow myself treats when I'm craving them the other day I went to the movies and I had some peanut butter cup and so now today even though I'm intentionally eating in a surplus I don't feel the need at all to cram any sort of junk in my body. Instead, I'm focusing on still putting whole nutritious foods in my body that I know that my body's gonna be able to turn around and make effective use out of that will continue to fuel my progress in changing my body and losing body fat. We are off to dinner at my butcher. I still feel so much loyalty to them even though I don't go to them to get my meat anymore. I am not at all hungry, but I think I will be once we get our food in probably like an hour. And I'm sure I'll want food once I start smelling all the yummy food food smells and have the menu in front of me. <laughs> cool, yeah, can we just do the Bell Campo burgers then? You want like cooked? That is an impressive side salad. I'm so glad I finally got to go there because I've been dying to go there for so long. And now I'm gonna finish out the night with two little squares of Who Kitchen almond butter and puffed quinoa dark chocolate. And that will be everything that I ate today on my refeed. If you guys liked this video or learned a little something, please do give this video a big thumbs up because it really does support me and my channel and I really appreciate it. Leave any questions, comments, or concerns down below in the comments. Please share this video with all of your friends and your family and your workout buddies and social media and subscribe for more videos hit the notification button so you don't miss those future videos and i will see you very soon bye <laughs>